Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, I'm tasting six uh, chili and chardonnays, so why have I only got five bottles in front of me? Well, I have a confession to make. Uh, I was, uh, it, it, uh, last night I was looking for a glass of something uh, to uh, maybe have while I was cooking, and I opened a bottle of uh, the Duet Chardonnay, uh, and uh, all the details are on the screen now. Uh, and uh, it was very nice, maybe on the, uh, just a little bit too oily uh, and pineapple chunky. And I thought, oh yes, I'll I'll uh, I'll uh, do the rest of it when I'm doing the tasting tomorrow. And uh, then I dropped the bottle and it smashed. Oh well. So instead of uh, that being wine number one, my wine number one is uh, Hacienda Araucano uh, Chardonnay Reserva from the 2011 vintage uh, in Colchagua. Uh, now this is the wine uh, from the uh, Lourton stable. Uh, so Francois Lourton, one of Francois Lourton wines. Let's give it a whirl. Strange, there's an almost fennel-like herby character coming through here. Um, the It's 13.5% alcohol, but it actually smells like it's a bit fresher and leaner and tighter than that. Um, Fruit-wise, um, it's that just ripe pineapple and quite a lot of citrus coming through and maybe a bit of, um, of nectarine in there somewhere. Tidy little wine. Um, um, Colchagua is not uh, not the best known place for, for Chardonnay and there's some bits of it that are certainly too hot, but it feels like here... Uh, it's, it's, it doesn't feel like the grapes have got to, got too warm. There is a richness about the wine. That's, I feel the, uh, uh, the weight of the fruit coming through now, but still it finishes fresh. And it's got this uh, herby, um, I mean, it's, they're in South Africa they talk about uh, finbos, and there's almost a, a little bit of that, uh, that finbos, uh, uh, yeah, oh, sorry, rubos, not finbos. Is it rubos? What, the, the, I think it's finbos uh, character, character coming through. Good, uh, but I would almost like to see it, uh, uh, that style in somewhere where it feels a little bit cooler, and because uh, uh, that, that the, the finish I'm left with is it, it's almost like getting bigger and bigger, I, 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 rather than uh, uh, leaving me with something that's lean and precise. So nice start, but um, mm, good, but not great. Uh, wine number two. Um, so we are uh, with Erasmus here, uh, and it's their Wild Ferment Chardonnay uh, from Casablanca. Now, I, I, I'm not sure whether they'd also do a Wild Ferment Chardonnay from Aconcagua Costa. Not sure, but ne the next one's Aconcagua Costa, but, so maybe we'll talk about that when we get on to that. But this is 2011 uh, from Erasmus. This is one of the first Chardonnays to uh, uh, to really show that Chile could do something more than uh, just rather blobby, oaky wines. Uh, and uh, here I stick my nose in, and it's uh, it's maybe not as out and out rich and creamy as it used to be, but it feels like it's going to be more precise. Um, there's a freshness about it. Uh, there is um, what I call a strawberry mivy character, almost like red berry fruit, touch of vanilla. And a creaminess, uh, but uh, it, it, there's also this uh, citrus and the, yeah, the citrus zestiness that uh, it smells like it's going to keep it all fresh. Nice mixture of richness and leanness. How does that make sense? Uh, well, the uh, richness comes. There's like a toasty character from uh, uh, a bit of the oak. There's a little bit of the malolactic character still in there, adding a buttery uh, character. I think there's some. It's been aged in on lees in the barrel. That's added a nutty nuttiness. Uh, and then there's this fruit. And there's this quite voluptuous character. Um, so a creamy strawberry mivy lolly, red berries with a bit of vanilla in there. But then there's this citrus precision that. Uh, reins all those rich flavours in and stops them getting a bit too wobbly. Maybe that's what I missed in the first one. There was, uh, it had the rich flavours, but not something to clamp them all together. Here, they've done it rather nicely and uh, the wine's looking good as a result. Wine number three. Uh, so this is um, this is from Aconcagua Costa, and it's from the same uh, same umbrella organisation. Uh, this is uh, Arboleda Chardonnay, uh, 2011. Um, Aconcagua Costa is. Um, uh, I mean, there's, Aconcagua is where Irasa is, uh, has their base, and it's known for quite full throaty reds. Uh, and, but uh, here we're much closer to the coast, a lot cooler there, and so good for white varieties, and I think they've got a bit of Pinot Noir there. Let's see what this wine's like. Well, it, it's strange because uh, there's a, uh, I was talking about richness and leanness on the on the previous one. Here, it feels like a, like a similar thing. Um, I don't know whether they've they've got newer oak here, but there's I get more toasty oak character coming through. Uh, but behind it, it feels like there's a more taut, precise 
wine than uh, than uh, than the, than the, the uh, Casablanca one from Arasa is. Uh, it smells good. Um, let's see what it tastes like. Good élevage there. Élevage is the art of uh, turning a gawky young wine into a grown-up, uh, friendly, uh, but um, fully rounded individual. And I think they've done that well here. Yes, and it's strange. I, I noticed the, the oak aromas, but when I come to taste it, uh, the oak sort of, no, it doesn't uh, it go too much into the background. It's still there, but you've got more of these oatmeal, a bit of pineapple, uh, citrus, green apple. Um, it's, uh, I, I, I'd be fascinated to watch how these two... Uh, uh, develop from vintage to vintage and uh, uh, and also I can't really, I'll, I'll, have to, I'll, I'll put up on the screen whether Erasmus does a, uh, um, a a wild ferment from Aconcagua Costa I've probably even done one of them in one of my videos uh, but um, here this feels um, this feels like something I, I, I want to sort of get a little bit excited about. It's it, it's it's nice wine um, and uh, it's precise. It's um, maybe maybe it's not the most complex of wine, but it's a darn good drink. Hey, what more do you want from a wine? Let's try wine number four. Wine number four is uh, Vigna Leda, uh, single vineyard Chardonnay from the Leda Valley. So not too far from Casablanca, uh, but uh, closer to the coast here. And uh, so probably a little, actually, no, I don't know whether it's closer to the coast than the Aconcagua Costa vineyards. Uh, it'd be interesting to, well, not all that interesting, but it will be vaguely interesting to uh, uh, to work that out. Uh, but uh, Leda's been making a, a name for itself with uh, with, with its uh, uh, white wines and, it, and also its uh, Syrah and its Pinot Noir. Uh, so these last two are from Leda. But anyway, let's dig, this, 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 Leda, Vigna Leda was one of the pioneers there. Let's dig in and see where we get to. Now, after the previous two being on that uh, slightly uh, oak influence side, here I've got a feeling that there is they have used oak here, but um, it's very much in the background. Uh, it feels like this is a more taut, precise wine, um, and uh, one that, whereas the previous two looked pretty nice now, um, from the smell of this, this is a wine that uh, there's still got some uncurling to do, but it feels like the weight is going to be worthwhile. Let's taste it. Well, I never put that at fourteen percent alcohol. Uh, there's a crispness and depth uh, and, and fine structure going going all the way through it. Um, just looked on the back, and it does say yes, it has been uh, barrel matured. But um, uh, I, really, if, I don't I, I don't know how that manifests itself apart from maybe in a general rounded confidence of the wine. Uh, it feels like there, there there has been some quite. Uh, taut, precise, I keep using those words, but that, that, those are the things that I think about. Um, uh, something fine-boned, high-cheek-boned wine uh, that has just had maybe some of its more angular features um, softened by by the time in oak. Uh, pretty classy stuff. Um, actually, well, as I say pretty classy. Um, it, it's, it, it, the fruit flavours are maybe, well, the flavours in general, maybe just a little bit um, simple. It, it, it's being slightly unfair on it. It's a very nice wine. Uh, but maybe I want a little bit more of something beyond the fruit and beyond the élevage flavours coming through. I don't get too much character that I can attribute to a place, apart from the, a place that, that's rather cool and uh, gives wine with uh, precise acidity. Um, but tasty wine. Have another swig. Final wine. Um, so this is, uh, we're still in Leda, uh, this is Santa Rita Medaya, Medaya Real, both these two, 2011 vintage. It says on Gran Reserva, but um, uh, in, in Spain, Gran Reserva, Rioja has to be in barrel for two years. I wouldn't, I don't think I'd put these in barrel for two years. Anyway, let's have a see. Now this does seem a little bit more, uh, I, was, I, was, I was talking about the precision on, on the, uh, the, uh, the Vigna Leda one. This feels to have got that, but it also feels to have got a few more layers of flavour. Uh, fruit wise, and maybe there's some apricot in here, um, there's a t it seems like there's a touch of cashew in there. Um, and uh, so it feels like it's going to have uh, the crispness, uh, but uh, yeah, maybe a few more layers, let's see. Yeah, I've got the lime, peach, cashew, uh, this apricot, a bit of fresh apricot, dried apricot, nectarines, that type of thing. Uh, it's a slightly richer wine than the uh, uh, the Vigna Leda. Maybe it doesn't have the uh, the cheekbones of the uh, uh, of the Leda. Interesting contrast between those two. I mean, there, there are times when I'd uh, prefer one and times when I prefer the other. They're both pretty good. Actually, they've all been pretty good. It's been a nice flight. I mean, I, I wasn't a huge fan of the Aracano. Um, it was it was okay, but uh, the other four are rather good advert for Chilean Chardonnay. See you soon.